Okay guys, welcome back to another episode of What's Your Build? In this episode, we've got the Arma Creighton. And you guys have asked me what we've done to these cars. We've actually had this one longer than we've had the channel and we've had plenty of time to test it. We're gonna go over what we've done to the car and how we make it the way it is and how we like the performance in this thing. Check this out. Okay, so let's talk about this thing and how it came to be mine. And what it is, is I'd been out of the RC world for a while there. And what happened was I got kind of disenchanted with the racing scene. Everyone was really vicious and it just wasn't any fun anymore. So I kind of stepped away from it. When I got back into it, these were on the market and a friend of mine showed me one and I just had to have one. So I went out and got this right away. This is literally the first RC of the new generation that I picked up and I was really shocked at how well this thing performs. It's an amazing truck and it's a pretty much a go anywhere type of vehicle, but this one does have some pretty cool modifications what makes what makes it super tough. So let's get down inside here real quick and we'll show you what it is we have. Now this is the RTR version and it does have some durability modifications to it. It has the EXB chassis, it has the EXB center braces, it has the hot racing top brace ends on it down here. And on this side, we put atomic ends on it out here and these are aluminum. They're really nice and they stop the pillow balls here from popping out. A really good add on there. It's just something that needed to be put on there because I'd, I'd broken so many of these right here. With this situation, it holds it really good. It's easy to adjust and it just sort of stays right where you want it to be. Also, we have the RPM arms on it and these are flexible. And guys, if you've watched the channel, you know what I'm talking about. These will flex almost to the point where the wheel right here will touch the chassis before it breaks the body or the arms and stuff. So it's a really good changeover. It makes things a lot tougher. It takes a lot of the worry out of it when you're running into stuff. Now, if you're running into something solid, you hit a post or a hydrant or a tree, these are gonna fail too. I mean, they're not completely bulletproof, but they are better than the stock ones. And being that this is a version four, it had the older style arms on it. Now, the EXB, which is sitting right down here, that one has the version five style arms on it, and you know they're a little more durable, but we still had problems with that too. So that's an issue that we had to deal with. Still, with the version four, these arms are designed for it. And on the wing back here, it has the RPM wing mounts right here, which are a lot more limber. They'll take more impact without imparting pressure to the inners of the car, which causes problems in the long run. So that is a beautiful upgrade. It still has the stock shock towers, and I've had to replace these once. These are just stamped aluminum, guys. They're nothing too special. That EXB chassis, it's right there. It's uh, still nice and straight. It's been run quite a bit, and it holds up beautifully as long as you use the aluminum center braces to prevent that twisting when it hits the ground. Also, on the tail of this thing, we've got a T-Bone Racing wheelie bar, and in my opinion, it's the best wheelie bar ever produced for one of these things to get it to do what you want it to. When you stand it up on its rear wheels, this is at the perfect angle to allow it to stand up and ride and go like crazy, and these really do a great job. But on top of that, the material they make these out of, which is not completely perfect, but way tougher than anything else I've run across, this will take a full tail stand impact from a high ramp and these don't generally fail. If you'll notice right in here, let's look down here. See how this one's bent a little bit right here? That's because that's where the impact really takes the brunt of it right in there. And this piece is easy enough to change with any kind of plastic. You can, I usually use like a Teflon type of material and I'll just reshape a new one and put it in there. That's the only part that generally fails on that. 
But there's a trick to mounting this on the bottom. And what I mean by that is if you take a look at this, you'll notice that I don't use these two holes, even though they give them to you, because I've used these before where I just used all four holes, but these are beveled down inside. And so it allows it to move a little bit. And after time, you can egg out those holes and the rear end walks on you. So what I do is I put a spacer in these and I just use fuel tubing, put it on the screws. And when you run it in, it holds center on this. These two mount into the new block that comes with the, the wheelie bar. And I leave the original screws down in the bottom here to keep that center. And once I started doing that, everything holds up really good. On the front here, we've got the EXB. This is the regular Creighton 6S EXB front bumper with the concussion rings in the back. You need to have some kind of protection up front, guys. This really saves the day because anything outside of that, and if you look at it this way, anything outside of this, the tire can take up unless you catch this small area. This will deflect so much damage. It'll make it last so much longer with those in there. Now, this one still has the stock shock ends on it, but if you look down in here, you'll see that I've put zip ties down in there and they loop down around the pin and they go through this bottom cup and they really do make it a lot stronger. I just haven't put the EXB ones on it. If you really want to make this tough, I have yet to have an EXB shock end fail and they do fit right into these arms and they go right on these. This is my wife's car now. And until she breaks one, I'm not gonna go ahead and change that. So we just beefed them up and we did it all the way around. Even in the back here, you can see the zip ties. And they do a pretty good job. They hold everything in pretty good shape. As far as the differentials go now, we set this up basher style and there's a whole lot of different ways you can set your oils up. But for us, in the front here, we've got 30,000 K or 30 K. In the back, we've got 50 K. Okay, so we're stiffer in the back than the front and we've got 100,000 in the center differential. Now that gives us more drive to the rear wheels when these come off the ground without bleeding off too much energy. But when you hit the ground hard, it'll still take up that extra momentum and that inertia will be shared within the system when, instead of just shocking the front. When you really stiffen these up in the center, it has a tendency to wear these drive cups really fast because there's nowhere for the energy to go. It takes it all up in the hardware and that's hard on the vehicle. Also, and I've mentioned this before as well. When you get up in the air with these things, you'll see a lot of people pin the throttle to get it to come around, but they'll hold the throttle when they hit the ground. That shocks the system so bad. And you hear about so many people just having problems with their differentials. I have pulled the fronts and the rears out and I've re-shimmed them just to make sure they're shimmed properly. But these are the standard diffs. These are not the EXB limited slip ones. I haven't had one of these fail yet. Just check your shimming, set your oil the way you want, put it back in, make sure there's no play in there. When you get your pinion up against that ring gear in there, make sure that everything's not tight, but there's no gaps. So when you put the power to it, there's nowhere for the pinion to go. It'll stay right in the teeth and it won't eat the internals. Now about every 25 to 30 runs on this thing, you might want to pop those open and have a look just to see, make sure that the shimming is still staying because metal parts wear. And as you put those diffs together, don't forget to lube the outside of that. That lubes the pinion. It also keeps everything running nice and smoothly inside when you rebuild your differentials. And if you want to know how that's done, check out Differentials 101. It's in the 101 playlist, and that'll help walk you through how to put one of these together. Also, if you take a look at this side, right down in here, you'll notice that we have the stock servo in this still. This one is still holding up. Tina doesn't drive this all too hard, but the stock servo is still holding up, but we do have a hot racing servo mount in there that's aluminum. We did put a grill over the top of the, the speed control there. And the reason we put that grill on there is because debris gets down in there. You know, the, the cool artwork they have on the top here leaves some pretty good sized holes, sticks and twigs and all kinds of weird stuff can get down in there, block that fan and even break some of the fan blades off. So this is just screen door mesh. That's all it is. These four screws come right out of the top and you can cut a piece. I recommend folding the edges down. It keeps you from having this tattered look on the edges. Fold them down, put the screws through the mesh, tie it right down. It allows it to breathe properly without letting debris down in there and it really extends the life of your fan. 
Also, she's still running the STX2 radio system. For her, it's not a big deal. She enjoys that. She doesn't get too crazy out of pocket. You know, we call her predictably cautious for a reason because she does go fast and she does know how to drive. She raced for quite a while, but she enjoys watching them run, which makes this the perfect vehicle for her because she can go anywhere she wants to with it. So there you go, guys. That's the build for the Creighton version four. I don't think I missed anything in that. Nice short video. That should answer your questions on this one. So if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. It's awesome when you do, and it helps us know whether or not this kind of segment here is something we should continue on with. You know, we really enjoy the wrenching, and if you watch the channel, you already know that. If you guys have done some cool stuff, and keep in mind, we do this stuff on a budget. That's why we use most of the Arma equipment, you know, the EXB chassis instead of going to M2C or just bash it, because this is a much cheaper way to pull that same thing off and it makes it so everyone can do it. That's why we do it. The running gear in this is, as always, it's gonna be stock. We don't change much just because if you get it out of the box, this is what you'll have. So if you've done a modification to yours that you think is pretty cool or one that didn't work very well, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and help others along the way. Hey guys, I'm AJ with AJ Jam Studio Sam. Keep bashing, guys.